Hello and welcome to Imperator Rome, the Livy update. Yes, I have finally got my hands on this patch and I am quite enjoying it. I have put maybe 50, 60 years into a Macadon campaign just to get a handle on the new mechanics so I'm not completely lost when I do a, a Let's Play for it. Uh, but I think I am at the point where I'm decent enough to give it a shot. So what we're going to do is play as Rome, and I noticed that achievements are not locked in the beta, so we're gonna be doing an achievement run as well. Because, you know what, in Imperator, I actually kinda of find that fun. Don't really find it fun in any of the other games, but in Imperator, I quite like it. So, with that out of the way, uh, let us click start. Uh, we need to, of course, name the, the game. Uh, Roman Roaming. There we go. Roman Roaming. I don't know if that's what I'm going to call it, but I guess you'll know because it'll be the title of the video. Anyway, for over 20 years, the nascent Roman Republic has fought a harsh campaign against the Samnite people to the south. Although victory often seemed far from grasp, the war ended in Rome's favor, resulting in the liberation of the important Greek city of Neapolis. The Samnites, however, retreat, having retreated to lick their wounds, are far from defeated. In the north, the Etruscan people eye the expansion of the Republic with apprehension. To the south, myriad Greek states plot behind one another's backs, all the while appealing to their benefactors in Greece for aid. On the far-flung island of Sicily, the foreign invasion of the mysterious Carthaginian Empire threatens to upset the precarious balance of power in the region. Will Rome rise victorious or fall to internal strife and barbaric hordes? The fate of the Republic rests in your hands, and indeed it does. So, at first glance, one could say, there's not really much new. This looks a bit new. This is new here, the queued events. And this button is new. But that's not it. That's not, that's not the most of it. These things here, supply trains, are a fantastic addition. I really, really like them. Uh, so, basically, the gist is now, if you want to go and siege an enemy's uh, city with uh, the fort on it, they will march over there and they not, they're not going to take attrition uh, on a monthly tick when in an enemy's territory. It just doesn't happen. They don't take attrition until their food capacity runs out to zero. And, uh, yeah, they have 28.8 food on them. However, if I was to have, say, a supply train, uh, they can store 50 for one. So this army of 12,000 with, you know, the various mix is uh, about half of what a single supply train will do. Now, supply trains take a long time to build, same as an equite, uh, the heavy cavalry. Uh, they are absolute trash in combat. Uh, like, they lose to literally everything massively. Um, so yeah, light infantry, no longer the worst thing ever. That, that would be the supply train. And uh, yeah, they're not, they're not cheap, um, other than Equite and Principe, the heavy and cavalry and heavy infantry. They are the most expensive, but you cannot go to war without them. You really cannot um, highly recommend against trying it. Um, so, uh, what else is new? This thing, let's talk about this thing. Uh, I actually don't quite like it, to be honest. Um, it's, it's added so that you can have more map modes in future, but I do prefer the idea of having uh, both rows still until those map modes are added. Uh, but basically what you can do is say you didn't want the culture map mode or you didn't need it, and instead you wanted, I don't know, trade goods. Uh, you take the button, you drag it over there, and now this is trade goods. Um, I guess it's an easier way of doing it than the EU4 system, but eh. also um, when you're in this, you can click on these to open up the various maps, but you, you can't click on the button. You, you have to click on the name, which is a little strange, a little strange. Queued events, basically these are the minor events that you might not care about um, as much, but they will pop up, they'll have a little timer on the bottom that will tell you, okay, if this timer runs out, this is the result of the event, but you can click on it and then you get your little event, and a lot of these are character-based events. So, um, yeah, there is quite a lot of character-based stuff, but to prevent it being an overload, a lot of it has just come in here. What this mostly means is I forget to look over here, and then uh, 
my my console or my king or whatever um you've just gained five stability and like oh i didn't know what that was from but i guess it was a queued event now another one of the big things is missions so let's have a look We've got two missions right now. We can do the Matter of Magna Graecia or Roman Italia. This one's a very conquesty kind of um, mission. This one's a very grow your own thing, uh, make make your own cities good. Um, actually, no, I think they're actually both conquer. -y. Considered complete when the entire region of Magna Graecia is under Roman influence, conquer or subdue the Italian peninsula. Hmm. I think I'd rather do Roman Italia first. Uh, but yeah. Missions are quite good. Um, I was obviously playing as Macedon, so I had, I think, the Pearl of Macedonia or the Pearl of Pella or something, and maybe it was the Matter of Greece. But in 60 years, I didn't manage to complete the economic mission tree, which I think, I don't know, I think that's uh, pretty good. Pretty good. Lots of stuff in there. Um, so, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? First off, I want to increase the amount of heavy infantry I have just by four and also I want two supply trains uh, we need to get an army's uh, a general in charge of the army so Lucius Papyrus Cursor will be the one for that um, another thing actually that I forgot to say before we get into this characters have now changed now you have major families and you don't get a whole lot of them um, between three and five I think is the norm so you get these major families, and depending on their prestige, they will want a portion of the jobs. If they don't get this portion of the jobs, they become scorned, and they, they don't like being scorned. They also have 200 power base to share between them. Uh, so that's this here. I think that's... No, it's not 200. I think this probably adds up to 150. I don't know, I'm not doing maths. No, it doesn't add up to 150. It's like 120. Probably 100. I don't fucking care. It doesn't matter. I'm not doing math on camera. Uh, but there are other people in the country. There are not just these families. There are much more characters than that. So uh, we've got the likes of the cursors that we've just seen. Um, or I guess he would actually be a, a Papirian. Uh, we've got the Sulpians, the Decians, the Marcians, the Fulvians, the S Sempronians. Sempronius Sophus is uh, yeah, a minor character. But... Right, the big thing that people have been complaining about for an awful long time is what happens if if they they don't make babies, they can't get married, they can't make babies. So what happens then? Does the the Sophic Sophic line, the Sempronian line, do they die out? No, the Sempronian line does not die out. The Sempronian line may pop up again. Um, just characters will pop up randomly with these names uh, throughout the campaign. It's just, the ones that don't pop up, they're not important enough. So, I think it's actually a pretty good change. I do like it. It does take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, the way it... I don't, I don't know if this is part of it, but what is affected most by the character changes is this here. Statesmanship. This, I have not gotten to, gra uh, to grips with yet. I... I'm not very good at this system just yet. Basically, um, the longer they do a job, the higher their statesmanship grows. S um, researchers don't get a whole lot of statesmanship, um, so I guess the, the goal is to use new characters as researchers and then put them as governors afterwards. It feels kind of like that is the way it wants you to play the game. Um, because, yeah, it looks like these guys get capped at like 36 um, statesmanship. Um, so, yeah, they gain the statesmanship, and the higher their statesmanship, the better they are at the job. If we check the officers, uh, this guy has got very low statesmanship. He's only got statesmanship of 27, which means he's only using one out of his six, um, zeal for the impact. So, if he had six zeal, he would be making an awful lot more, uh, omen power. So, 12 omen power. But he doesn't, so he isn't. And that's basically it. That is that is the, the long story short, the short story long, the extra stuff that you wanted to know. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is add a general to the navy. We'll go with Lucius Postumius. Uh, you seem like a fine chap. 
Uh, we got some trade routes that we want to do. I would love some horses, but I can't get any. Are we trading away horses? No. No, we're not. That's unfortunate. All right, so what do I want instead then? I could get some wine. We've already got the surplus. I could get some salt for the surplus. That does seem like a good idea, so we'll do that. Trade with Venetia. And the only other thing I can get is bloody wine. I guess it's better than nothing, so sure. More Freeman happiness. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, my little dude, Ad Peoples. Um, you are loyal. But the other ones, you, 42, that's good. 40, that's good. You're not a dude. Uh, is it you? Yes, it is. 40, okay, that's good. Inventions. What do we want to do for inventions? Mm, taxes. And probably some supply limit. Free idea slots, we'll do that one. Some morale, we'll get some morale recovery or ship building costs, it's, it's good. And then monthly corruption negative, good. Uh, for our omen, we could go for some taxes, I think. Taxes are the majority of our money right now. So we'll get some taxes. And for missions, we want to do Roman Italia. Since the founding of Roma by Romulus hundreds of years ago, our proud city has skirmished with our Italic neighbours, vying for control of the coasts and cities of Latium and Campania. Our recent victories over the Etruscans and Samnites have proved our superiority, and it's clear that it is Rome who is destined to unite the Italic peoples and lead them to glory. So completion criteria, conquer or subdue the Italian peninsula. Start mission. So now we've got this mission tree, which is like an entire EU4 mission tree, but this is just one mission which I think is pretty cool. Um, so we've got this one, which is a uh, optional mission. Or actually, no, these ones are, you could take this one or this one. Uh, this one isn't mutually exclusive with anything. So do I want destroy Italian allies or pan Italian Italic Congress? If I do this, uh, has greater or equal to 70 territories. Uh, we declare war on all Italic subjects. Wow, okay. Um, give a large penalty to assimilation speed and wrong culture happiness in the region of Italy for 75 years. Reduce our stability by 25 and increase our aggressive expansion by 10. Or pan Italic Congress. There are three non subject Italic states in mainland Italy with greater than 50, greater than negative 50 opinion of Rome. Um, encouraging expansion is not active. Uh, that would be this one. So I can't do this one and this one at the same time. Rewards. Participating nations will receive diplomatic events which can improve their relations or create alliances. Perhaps that would also allow me to vassalize some of them? Or I could take Encourage Expansion. It's not... This can't be taken while this is active. And the same the other way around. But once this finishes, maybe this one will be available. Uh, this gives me claims on the Italian peninsula. Well, that seems pretty nice. Um, pick between various military modifiers. Hmm, interesting. I'm going to do the Pan-Italic Cong uh, Congress first. And that's going to take a year to do, and then we'll see what the result is after that. Meanwhile, my military is building up. We've got no money. We've got decent manpower. 40 political influence still, uh, I don't know what I want to do with that just yet, so I think let's just speed it up, and after 14 minutes, let's unpause for the first time. Panatelic Congress organized, many private villas were donated for host hosting and discussing business confidentiality with our esteemed guests. We're optimistic the occasion will create a sense of friendship and cooperation across the Italic states, all of whom are equally threatened by Gaulish tribes to the north, ambitious Greeks to the south, and a long arm of Punic influence. All that remains is to send out the invitations and await the responses. Hmm. So, I could send 25 gold and then everyone gets 15 opinion of me, or I could just say they will come. I'm going to do the... I'm gonna, I know I've only got 10 gold, but I'm going to send the gift anyway. I'm going to go into a little bit of debt for it. So I think that's going to be fine. Hmm. So who would I be able to get here? 
Uh, probably Luceria would be one. Oh no, this is me. This is already me. Okay. Uh, I mean, it might be Apulia and these guys down here. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Also, hopefully, I get a gift from the gods. Pandelic Congress convenes. Uh, right, so it was me, then Umbria, Pacentia, Sabinia, and Siculia. Siculia is down here. Right there. We finally received responses from the invited states, though not all accepted our generous invitation. Uh, this is a rather embarrassing turn of events for Consul Publius Sempronius Sophus, who hoped to set a new precedent for Italic relations, mirroring the style of diplomacy hitherto found only in Greek city-states of old. What well, would have to do? <clears throat> so I get plus one diplomatic reputation and 15 opinion with a bunch of people. Uh, or we could say forget it, we lose popularity, lose political influence. I still get the opinion bonus. I don't know why I would just forget it. This will have to do. This will indeed have to do. Uh, desperate measures, we lose five stability. That's okay. We're okay for that. We can almost get a stab here as well. Dialogue with Sabinia. The Sabines have a long history with Rome, joining the first settlers of our city and sharing a strong tradition, although they have allowed jealousy to corrupt their hearts. The time is now, the past is the past. We must decide what to propose to the Sabinian delegates. We could desire friendship, uh, become my ally. Uh, we wish to protect them, guarantee. We will defend Sabinia, we have some demands. Feudatory, yes, I do like that. I do like that. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. Uh, Sabinian scum, no. Uh, defend Sabinia, but we have some demands. I like that idea. Let's hope they say yes. I want you to be in me. Um, our envoys return from the Sabinian delegates, grinning as he shares the news that they have submitted to our protection and more. Nice, a kind of new feudatory. That's fantastic. All right, let's see, what el who else is going to uh, submit to Rome? The Umbrian Presentian Alliance, it's these guys. The delegates of Umbria have been locked in a private negotiations with those of Pacentia scarcely being seen in days. Maybe a way to disrupt their happy union, but it won't be easy. Hmm. Plotting against us, we can try and undermine the alliance. Uh, my ruler's charisma. Six is not great, but I'm going to give it a shot. Diplomatic chicanery. Our feeble attempts to disrupt the friendship of Umbria and Pacentia were quickly spotted, damaging our reputation and relations with the two allies. Okay, so I'm not getting those guys. It's fine, we'll just kill them instead. Dialogue with Pacentia. Pacentia holds no special place in our heart, but they ha sent a delegation and we must treat with them. Who knows, maybe we, we may even find some common ground. Time is now, the past is the past, we must decide what to do, what to propose to the Pacentian delegates. Well, we're going to try and get a feudatory again, of course. We're shaking. The literal shakening. Our envoys returned from the Pacentian delegates, fuming that they were egregiously plastered in insults and chased out of the building. All right, well, uh, we'll, we'll murder you right good and quick. Who's next? Sabinian-Umbrian friendship. Hmm, delegates of Sabinia and Umbria have been locked in discussions and found a large degree of common ground. Wait, Sabinia, we've, we've already, we've already... We've already got Sabinia, so it's okay. Um, relations between the new na two nations are warming, though whether this will end up being in our interest or not remains to be seen. I guess we'll find out. Come on, who's next? Dialogue with Umbria. So we can't make you a feudatory. We put aside their feuds with the Etruscans just to have a pop at us, though I suppose we may have done the same in their position. They could be useful allies against the Gauls. I, I kind of don't care about them. What of it, Umbrian scum? Talks with Umbria conclude. Our envoys return from the Umbrian delegates, fuming they were egregiously plastered and blah de blah de blah Feudatories anxious. Nusarian envoys who represent our italic feudatories claim they're insulted at being excluded from the Congress and hearing that Sabinia was offered status akin to their own. They worry their privileges are being cheapened and want to ensure their status is not altered or forgotten. Lose more money and they all get opinion of me or they lose opinion of me. 
That's easy choice. I'll spend the money. Spend money to make money. Dialogue with Seculia. Do I want to make you a feudatory? Well, I mean, yes. Give it a shot. Why not? Become my feudatory. And the literal shaking happens again. Well, I mean, we got one free feudatory, so that's good. Uh, the Pacentians and Seculians are friends. That's unfortunate. You're a settled tribe, but you're my feudatory. Is that even possible? I don't know. The Congress concludes. The Panatelic Congress is finally over. It will certainly have far-reaching consequences for the future. Or so Consul Publius claims in his concluding speech. In truth, it will be hard to judge until many years have passed. Let's hope they will be kind to Rome. Gaining 5 popularity and 10 political influence. And we have completed a mission task. So, uh, I think what we do is we click this or... Encourage expansion can be completed. Oh, okay. Done. We've, we, we've clicked it. It's currently in progress. Okay, well, I guess in a year then that's going to come... Come good. Auspices of Jupiter. To ensure support for war and official auspices from Jupiter, Optimus Maximus, the patron of good faith and greatest of the gods, is recommended by the Fitials. Assurance of victory will hearten the soldiery and buoy the people's enthusiasm. While there is no doubt that Rome will be granted favourable auguries, it would not bode well if the priests returned with an inconclusive or, Jove forbid, pessimistic result. So, we gain some corruption, which I don't want to do. Um... Get some loyalty and political influence. I like that idea. We lay our faith in Jupiter. The Auspex has returned. Imperative auguries were conducted on the Capitoline on the first clean morning. After tense wait, Consul Publius receives an inscrutable chief augur Tiberius Claudius in the Comitium. Tiberius slowly steps forward and raises palms to hush the thronging crowd. With coy trepidation, he finally bellows, Negation! The smiles of the crowd drop as stunned silence falls, slowly break into pockets of despaired wailing. Consul Publius looks glumly at Tiberius, who merely shakes his head. Fuck you. Well, that's not good. That wasn't good at all. That wasn't a part of this, I don't think. But, uh, this will have to wait until the next episode, because I'm going to take a short break here. We have gone a grand total of one year one month and one day which seems like a perfect place to end the first episode so thank you all very much for watching uh, i'm excited for this one the livy update it is pretty fucking good i think uh cicero was fantastic this is good too so thank you all very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you again in the next one Bye bye